Hello everybody and thanks once again for joining me here at Lisa Horton Crafts. We're going back in time a little bit today. Um, Lisa bought out these fabulous mandala stamps ooh, ages and ages and ages ago. And you can tell how long ago they, they were bought out because this is the original packaging that, um, that they came in. Uh, until she sort of changed it up for this fabulous green um, packaging. So there are three mandala sets. And um, I've used two in this card sample and the card that I'm making today. Yeah, the three sets, the Choose Happy, which I have to say is probably my favourite. Um, there are nine stamps in this set, but I just love these little, these little sort of petally bits here. Um, that's why I've used it on today's sample, because it, it's my absolute favourite of the three. So that's the Choose Happy nine stamps in that set then we've got stay strong which again is a beautiful set and and i i just love these little extra bits here i, I just think the patterns in them all is just they're just so pretty and so so versatile uh, and then the create beautiful things and this one to me if you're going to start with a mandala set this is probably the set i would go for okay it, so the other thing I'm using today is the multi-layer blossom in Lily stencils, stamps and dies. Um, I'm going to show you two colour combinations, the one I used yesterday and the one that I'm going to use today. Okay. And there's a couple of little tips that I'm going to go through with that as well. And then for the base of my card, I'm using the nested stitch bubble squares. So first things first, I'm going to do the blossom in Lily um, stenciling. Okay, so if I just move my card out of the way and we'll just make a start with the stenciling. Now, the one that I did for my sample on here, I've used salvaged patina, I've used peacock feathers, and I think I also used a little bit of cracked pistachio. And obviously, I've um, made all the colours of my card tie in with the colours that I've used on the flower. Okay. I'm I'm only using the blossoming lily on here because I'm I'm doing the, the stenciling. You could put any flower on here. You don't even have to put a flower on, you could use the rest of the mandalas, but I'll come to that in a minute. So that was one um set of colours that I'd used. Now my other set that I'm using today are these three. Okay. So I've got milled lavender, which is a really lovely, soft, purpley colour. Um, I'm using shaded lilac. Now this has got sort of a, a bluey tint to it. So it's not a, a, a true purple, it's more of a bluey purple. But I just think it works with these other two colours. And then I've got wilted violet. This is my absolute favourite colour in the Distress range. The ink and the oxide. Okay. So first things first, we're going to go in with our leaves. Now I'm only actually stenciling the main flower. I'm not doing the extra leaves and I'm not doing the extra flowers. OK, purely and simply because I don't need them today and I, and I don't want to waste time doing the things that I'm not going to be using. OK, so we're going in first with Twisted Citron and you'll find that I normally use the same greens all the way through. If I'm doing leaves, these are the two um, greens that I would normally go for for leaves. So these are these are what I'm going to do today. So I'm going with Twisted Citron and I'm going quite light because this is my base green. You can tell how light I'm going as to where I'm holding the brush. Because the further back that you hold the brush, the less pressure you'll put on with your inking. Okay, so always bear that in mind. If you want a lighter colour, use your brush at the end and you won't get as much colour on your stenciling. So I've done my green for the base of the leaf and then I'm going in with my milled lavender as the base of my flower. Okay. Quite quickly, quite soft. Now I am holding the brush quite a way down, not because I want a heavy colour, but because this milled lavender is a really soft purple. And although I want it soft, I do want to be able to see it. So I am putting 
a little bit more pressure on this one than I would normally. Normally I'd be holding the brush back here to get me a light coverage, but I do want it to sort of actually physically be there, if you know what I mean. Okay, so that's my base layer. Putting that to one side because I will come back to that stencil towards the end. Okay, we're going in with number two. And again, for the green the leaves, I'm going in with Twisted Citron, but I'm going heavier on this one. So I'm going in a little bit heavier with my Twisted Citron because I want this to stand out from the background. I know it's the same colour, but the heavier you go in with the colour, the more it will stand out. Okay, so that's my green for that. I'll probably put the lid back on that because I don't think I need that again. And then I'm going back to my purple. Now, <clears throat> I've got choices here. I'm going to go in with the shaded lilac, but not heavy, okay? Okay, so I'm going in with shaded lilac, and like I said to you, this has got quite a, a bluey tint to it, okay? It, it won't look blue because of the other colours it's with. Um, if you use it on its own, or you use it with other blues, it will bring out the blue in the colour. So just something to bear in mind when you're, you're blending your colours, um, that it's got that sort of bluey base to it. So if you mix it with blues, it'll look more blue. And if you mix it with purples, it will look more purple. Okay, so that's number two. Now you can see here that I've come off with the, the green ink off my stencil. So I've, I've brushed here and I've got green on here. I'm really not worried about that because I really don't think it will make any difference. And let's face it, in nature, flowers aren't always perfect, are they? So... Um, because they're not perfect, I'm not worried about a little bit of extra colour that isn't the colour that I'd wanted to use, if you're with me. Okay, so going in with our next green on our leaves, and I'm using Mowed Lawn. And again, I'm not going light, I'm going reasonably heavy, because this is just going to stand out as the veins on the leaves. And I'm going up and down rather than um, in circles because the the stencils although they're really good thickness of stencil i think they're 350 micron mylar um because these these little pieces here are quite narrow if you go round in circles or you brush against them you might move them um and i, and I don't want it to spoil the inking underneath okay so the next purple we're using is this one and we're going to go in with wilted violet now I, I really, really, I can't tell you how much I love this colour. But I'm not going in too heavy. I know I'm holding the brush quite a way down, but I'm still not putting too much pressure on this stencil. Because I want it to stand out, but I don't want it to be so in your face that you think, that looks awful. I mean, I don't think it looks awful. I'm going back in with shaded lilac on here, and I'm going reasonably heavy. And again, I'm going backwards and forwards as opposed to round and round because, again, some of these smaller pieces of um, mylar might just lift or move because they are so thin. They're thin because it gives you the beautiful detail. Um, you know, you can't have it all. Um, I just think it's worth spending a little bit of time just to take care of your stencils as well as thinking about the final piece. Okay, I'm happy with that. Now, I am going to go back round the main flower and I'm going to go round it with a completely different colour. I'm just going to go round the leaves with um, my mowed lawn just to give them a bit of detail because what I'm actually not using on this is the um, stamp. I'm not inking the stamp up and I'm not I'm not actually stamping the image. See on this one that I did yesterday I did stamp the image okay but I'm not doing that today because the one I've actually done ready to put on today's card because I didn't want to spend time cutting this one out um, I haven't used the stamp and I personally for me I prefer it 
that's not to say I won't ever use the stamp because I would use the stamp in a completely different way because you, you can use the stamp set standalone. You don't need the stencils, you don't need the die cut. You can use the stamps just purely standalone. That's the beauty of these sets to my mind anyway. Okay, so I've gone round my leaves and now I'm going round the edge of the flower and I'm using salvaged patina. Nope, I haven't lost my marbles, promise. But I just want this to give a completely different colour on the edge of the petals. Because as I've said to you before, nature's weird. Nature never does what you expect it to. And if you look at um, if you look at a red rose, is it all red? Because I don't think it is. Um, and that's why I just wanted to use a completely different colour. Just going round the outline of these petals just to make them stand out a little bit and just give them a little bit of difference if you like. I'm not worried if I'm picking up any of the green off the leaves for the same reason. So it's dead quick, dead easy and then you can just bring in whatever ink there is on your stencil if you haven't got enough you don't have to keep re-inking. Just bring in that ink that's sitting on your stencil just to add a little bit of interest around the edge of the flowers. Okay, so if I lift that off, perfect. I love that. Other people might hate it. It, it is your colours, you know, your choices are 100% totally up to you. Um, you just You just go with the flow, do whatever colours you like. So I've done my stenciling. If you were going to stamp this, the way I would line it up, the easiest way for me to line it up, would be to leave my stencil in place and then add my stamp over the top. Because I can see through my stamp. Apologise if you get a glimpse of the top of my head. But I am trying to just line this up. So if you line that up with your stencil and then lift your lift your lid on your uh, ultimate, press down, lift it up and when you take your stencil away your stamp, I'm hoping my stamp is clean, should be in exactly the right position and then you can just take it to your die cutting machine after you've stamped your image, put your die over the top, don't forget you'll get like um, a 2mm lip all the way around your image so don't try and line it up with the lines because it won't you just need to line it up just outside the lines tape it down and run it through your machine so here is the one i did yesterday you can see again it looks slightly different i don't think you'll ever get two the same i really don't um you can't possibly get two the same unless you do just the just the stencils if you're adding bits around the edge they'll never look the same but I think that's where you score. You could do half a dozen of these and put them all together, two or three at least, and put them all together on a card. I think that would look fabulous. Okay, now I'm going to stamp my background on my card. So I'm going to be using my mandala stamp. Okay, so I just put my magnets on there to hold my card in place. And this is the um, mandala stamp that I'm using today. This is the one from the Choose Happy. Now what I want is a corner around each piece so um, if you look at the one I did as my sample you can see there's a piece of mandala and all it is 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 a small piece of the half mandala that comes in each set okay <clears throat> you can make those into a full mandala if you want and I'll show you that in a sec um, so I would line it up with because these are mirror images all the way around you'll see that I don't know whether you can see it because it's clear. If I just put it on here. You can see that the pattern repeats all the way around. Okay, so when you're lining it up, you've got these two points here, and then you've got two sets of these lovely little petals here. So you can line it up so that it's central on your corner of your card. All right, and that's what I've done with mine. So I'm going to put that down on there, and I'm going to line it up with the top piece of this petal in fact I might yeah 
top piece of that petal because if I go with the top piece of that petal so you can see the corner here of my mandala stamp and I don't want any white card showing in the corner okay so I'm lining it up so that I've got the same either side and I've totally covered my corner so we just flip this over and I'm using a versifying Claire ink pad because I think the coverage that these give is absolutely fabulous just ink that up you don't have to ink the whole thing but just to make sure that I'm getting everything that I need I'll probably ink up more than I need to and then I'm going all the way around the cards moved all the way around my card in each corner and I know it's going to be in the same position because I'm going to mark my mat okay so there's my there's my stamped image now I'm going to turn this round but before I turn it round I'm just going to mark where it's been sitting and I'm just using a just a fibre pen there just to mark where it's sitting don't worry about that it will come off it's not going to mark your mat for a forever so now I'm going to turn it round I know my stamp is in the right place because my card has gone in exactly the right place re-ink my stamp stamp it down and then lift it off and go all the way around put my card back in the right place because I've marked it so I know where it's going ink my stamp rub it down I mean how quick is this you know it, it's and it will give you such a fabulous effect at the end of the day it, it's just I just think they're amazing and um, they were probably of the early things that Lisa bought out one of my most favorite products and um, hence why I've got all three sets because <laughs> they're just fabulous you can use them with a lighter ink do a background with them if you wanted to okay so I've got my four corners all right and then all I did was color them in now you can see on here I've gone with greens um, sort of turquoisey greens to match my flower so I'm matching all my my elements okay now you'll see here I've put this on an 8x8 card this first matted layer is seven and a half by seven and a half and this is seven by seven so it just comes down beautifully I didn't want to use the bubbles on this because I wanted the background to reflect what flower I put in the middle okay so I'm not going to sit here and colour this today because that would be just totally boring so this was the one I did in readiness now I've used as you can see purples on here all right now then my 8x8 card is white and my beautiful purple and that are going on there but to me that's a bit stark that that just sort of I don't know it just needs something to bring it all together so what I'm going to use is one of the smaller flowers from the blossom and lily set okay so I'm using this one here and I'm using distress oxide what I would normally do is use wilted violet and use second generation ink to stamp all the way around but um, I thought because I'd got shaded lilac out I would use shaded lilac because it's quite soft anyway and then I'm just going to randomly stamp this little flower stamp all the way around my card okay so I've got my background done and now I'm going to add my elements okay so I've already put my 3d pads on the back now do you see what I mean the difference between putting the purple card on plain white like that or white with a little bit of interest in the background like that I just think I just think it's worth spending a little bit of time and thinking about what you've got going on on your card and on your background just to make it look the best you can really okay so 
I'm only doing this by eye. I never measure because it just takes too long to measure. Okay, so I put that in there. And again, I've already put my backing pads on here. It's slightly off, but I don't think anybody's going to really notice. And then I'm going to add my flower here. Okay, now you can add your flower like that. You can add your flower so that it overhangs the mandalas. Doesn't really matter. Um, you don't have to use this one. You could use any. I know the colours are off. Um, but it was just as an example, this was one I've had done. So um, I just thought I'd show you that you could use any flower on top of that. So this is my sentiment. And this sentiment comes from one of the sets. I think I used... Um, what set did I use for the sentiment? This is what I mean, they mix and match beautifully. So the especially for you came from the Stay Strong, but I am using the Choose Happy Mandala. Okay, so because my sentiment is going up here in the middle, I'm going to put my flower so that it actually goes over the top of the mandalas. All right, I'm not worried about that because you can see what they are. You know what they are, but I don't want the sentiment at the side on this one. If I was putting the sentiment at the side, I'd make sure that my flower was in the middle and not touching any of the mandalas. But I stamped this one direct onto the card and this one I've matted and layered. So I've made the sentiment a little bit bigger so it won't go on the side without looking daft. So that's why I've put it where I've put it. OK, and then my sentiment is just going up at the top here. Like so. OK, card done. But you'll notice that, again, I've, I've left quite a lot of white on here. And I've also added just some little white lines where the black is, just to give a hint of sort of light. Um, can you see that? Yeah, you can. So on the little finials here and on the, the circular bits, I've just like just using my um, gel pen, just a jelly roll pen. Um, and I just think it. Those little details just make all the difference, okay? But the one thing I did want to just show you quickly was how you can do this with your half mandala set. So I'm going to put my card in here, like so. Nearly finished. And then I'm going to take my stamp, which is here, and I'm going to place it down on my card. All right. This isn't going to work if I don't cut that down. Because I did the original one on a on a square. And that what I might do actually is turn it over and show you on the other side because it won't matter. It's not going to see the other side when I've used it. Okay. So I've got my piece of card, and I'm not putting it at the top because I don't want. The pegs to get in the way of the stamps so if you're using it for stamping make sure that you bring your card and your image down a little bit so that these pegs don't interfere with it all right my card is in the middle hopefully and my mandala is in the middle of my card all right so I'll put that there bring that over lift my stamp up and then ink my stamp okay so I'll bring that over Put that down on my card like so and this is the beauty of these you can make a proper full mandala without too much trouble okay so now I'm going to turn it round so that I've got the other side of the card now what I would say the important bit is to make sure your stamps clean because when you're lining this off your stamp needs to be clean, otherwise you'll end up with ink marks on your card. And if I haven't cleaned this properly, you'll see what I mean. Okay. Right. So now, if I just if I just flip this over, it won't line up. Because my mandala that I put down first, this half, isn't actually right in the middle of the card. Okay. So what you need to do is line your stamp up with your stamped image. 
So I've got my magnets back on there. Put that down on my card. Inky top. Can you see where there are marks here? That's because my stamp was still a little bit wet. So I used a baby wipe to just wipe the ink off. And it's where it was just a little bit wet. But you won't see that when you've stamped it and coloured it all in. I promise. And then put that down there like that. Okay. It's a little bit off, but it's because I've done it really, really quickly. But you can see that if, you, if you've lined it up properly, like I did with this one, it does look perfect. Now, there's a little bit of a gap here, but when I'm colouring this in with Lisa's um, fine liner pens, which was what I used on the two that I've used here, I used the black fine liner on here. I used Copics to colour the rest in because I wanted a difference in the shading. But if you wanted just solid colour, these are perfect because they've got such a fine nib that they will get into all those beautiful little details on your stamps. So if you were colouring this and you knew that there was a little bit of a gap there, like there is, when you colour it in, you can make those gaps disappear. Like that. And nobody will be the wiser. Because when you colour all the way down here, you can lose any little gaps there as well in exactly the same way. Now you would never know that was two, two separate stamped images put together, would you? Now, I've used the flower on this card. But you don't have to if you've got these, if you've got these sets. I would say you could use, right, I'll put them here ready, so you could use one of the smaller mandala stamps and stamp it in the middle and it's all going to match or you could use a smaller one with the very small one on top and then you could just add a sentiment across the middle or you could take your bigger one stamp it on card cut it out and just put it over the top there so that you've got a pattern all the way around and then you've got an image in the middle there are so many different ways of using these stamp sets so i'll love you and leave you there and um, i hope that was okay i hope i've given you some different ways of using your mandalas i hope i've given you some more confidence to use your stencils and your stamped images and your die cuts and everything um, and I look forward to seeing what you make. So thanks very much for joining me today. I hope you all enjoyed that. Take care of yourselves and each other and I'll see you all again very soon. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.